Hello and welcome back to Fred1. This is part two of two videos and in part one we looked at this sort of cheap Chinese Crosley type record players that you see all over eBay and uh, we, we discussed how poor these were and we tested the speed on it and the speed was really really fast and it's basically a pile of junk. <laughs> so what we're going to do in part two is we're going to take it apart and we're going to have a look inside and uh, just sort of see how cheap and nasty it really is. So let's get the screwdrivers out and let's get this thing apart. Anyway, I'm going to try and get inside it now, um, probably end up breaking it, it's probably glued to buggery but uh, I'm going to try and get inside it and just uh, have a look and sort of see the build quality inside. I'm sure I'm going to be absolutely amazed by it. But anyway, let's get my screwdrivers and uh, let's get inside it. Right, so there's four bolts that appear to be holding the top element of the record player in place. And I've removed those. And then this then comes out. And there was a little multi-plug that I've taken the liberty of undoing because it was a little bit sort of fiddly. But that's, oh, there we go. And that's it that sort of comes out so let, let me get you a little bit closer with the uh, camera when I... okay so here we go this just uh, I mean the first thing to check is to see is it safe you know um, yeah I suppose so you've got the mains lead coming in there that goes to well I'd say a plug that goes to some kind of soldered connector that goes into your mains transformer yeah you know it's, it's isolated um, it's a bit how you're doing isn't it and then the uh, the power lead comes out there and goes to the main amplifier board which is sort of here the tuning section you got down here this was probably the best part of the radio you know it's nothing brilliant but at least it worked it seemed to sort of be quite linear on the uh, tuning control it's got a proper sort of cord and everything else and then you got the uh, speakers now i did check the power rating of this amplifier and it's rated at just one watt per channel so that probably explains why it doesn't distort. You can turn this right up to its maximum setting and it doesn't get particularly loud, but it uh, it doesn't distort. So, you know, one watt RMS. That's RMS, by the way. One watt RMS, you know, it's not going to distort. Speakers are rated at three watts. Three watts per channel. They look about two inch to me from here. Um, what else we got? This was the speed. This was the switch that turned off the automatic sort of um, stopping at the end and then this was the RCA output well, I think this deserves a closer look let me just zoom in on that you know typical typical very cheap Chinese production why use screws when you can use a dollop of hot snot because that whole switch appears well it's not a switch is it the RC the RC socket you've got one screw at the top there and then the rest of it it's just secured with uh, the old hot snot. And I don't know, I mean, I assume these wires are soldered. They're soldered and they've gone along and then they've put a little dob of hot snot there. And I don't know why they do that. There's no need for that. So this at the back of the unit says that this is for external speakers. I think this is just an RCA line out. If you were stupid enough to connect this uh, pile of rubbish to a separate amplifier. <laughs> Why would you? When the turntable's running at 47.3 or 4 RPM, it's running, oh, I don't know. But uh, that's what that's for. Anyway, let's look at the uh, turntable unit. Here's the turntable unit. I can see straight away there's a rubber belt. So it's not even a direct drive. Um, it's a belt driven unit, which would probably, uh, it would help, I suppose, if it was direct drive. At least it might go at the same speed. And you've got just a little tiny micro switch here with this I don't know why you've got this clear plastic protector on it, but obviously that's the uh, auto on and off uh, sort of switch that it knows when a toner gets to the end. And then we've got a little board up here, which, oh, hang on, there's actually some little pot adjustment pots on there. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Let me just get a bit closer to that. And there you go. It, would, it does appear that internally you've got some adjustment here for the speed, because this is marked 78, 45 and 33. And these are little 10k adjustment pots. So I suppose with a very fine screwdriver, you uh, you could adjust the turntable speed. So it might be possible to get it to run at 40, uh, 45 RPM. It's going to be a bit tricky because obviously you're going to have to adjust it, put the turntable back, you know, in the unit, run it, adjust it. Um, I can't be asked. I'm not going to be bothered with that because it just sounds terrible anyway. And they've just got some resistors. They've got a little bypass wire there. Obviously, they didn't decide to put a resistor in that particular that particular part for some reason. 
So yeah, okay, you know, if you really wanted to play with this, um, if you had, if you were that inclined, you probably could get the speed, well, a little bit more accurate. And there's the speed selection switch there. And again, you know, using the old uh, hot snot on the solder joints, which are, is pretty pretty pointless. There's no need to sort of insulate it. Um, but uh, well, there you go. Yeah. So uh, well. You know, would you really want to take this apart and start? I mean, most people aren't even going to dream of taking it apart. They're just going to want it to work out of the box. But uh, there you go. I suppose that's why they put the uh, sort of trimming trimming adjustment on the front of the sort of other units that I've seen. There's this bloody hot snot just all over the place. But I suppose they've had, you know, had an issue, so they moved that little trim pot to the, uh, to the front of the unit there to allow you to adjust the RPM. But I mean, inside it, it's horrible. Um, it plays records too fast and potentially at over five grams tracking weight on the stylus there it can potentially damage the records so no surprise this gets a thread in the shed big thumbs down I even feel I've been done at five quid <laughs> let alone if I'd have paid full price so there you go yeah just don't buy these you know just 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 save your money like I said at the beginning of the video you've got options um, these are just a waste of money and potentially damaging to your record. So that's about it. Um, I might think of some way. I'm like, you know, this isn't good enough to give to anyone. I wouldn't dream of giving this away to anyone. Um, I might kind of think of a way of destroying it, um, sort of very dramatically. I don't know. Maybe in a few. Keep an eye out on the channel. You might you might see this again for the very last time. But as for now, as always, thank you very much for sticking with the video. Your views are almost always welcome on Fred and Shed. It's only a small channel, you know. Hit that like button. Let me know that you're watching the stuff and uh, you know you like what I'm doing. That encourages me to make more now, videos. As always, please look after yourself. Stay safe, and of course, I'll catch you all on the next one. Bye now.